Hello, everyone. Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. We heard those words in our Gospel reading today. We heard Jesus giving that first call to discipleship to Simon and Andrew as he encouraged them to drop their nets and to follow him and become fishers of men. Scripture tells us that at once and without any kind of hesitation, Simon and Andrew followed Jesus and headed out with him to find more disciples. It sounds so simple, doesn't it? The Gospel writer Mark glazes over the fact that Simon and Andrew gave up their very livelihood as fishermen, the thing that they did best, to follow Jesus around Galilee. Watching him preach, driving out demons and healing the afflicted, and learning from him. Jesus did not ask Simon and Andrew if this was a good time for a Galilean teaching tour, nor did he give these followers of his a clear road map for the journey. He simply called them to trust in him and to multiply their efforts. In the midst of political unrest, continued fears about public health, concerns about our own futures, it's important for all of us to consider the simple call to follow Jesus. But what does that mean today, in our time, as we strive to gain more and more control over a very uncertain world? How do we let go? Not in terms of apathy or indifference, but in surrender, to trust that the Lord will see us through. How do we turn from what the world tells us is important and instead focus our gaze on our Saviour, trusting that he will multiply our efforts to his glory. As pastor of St. Brendan's during a global pandemic, I've been giving this a great deal of thought and prayer. Our parish family have been tremendously generous, especially in funding the majority of our expansion campaign in the last few years. But as a parish, we have not escaped the financial challenges of COVID-19 and the pandemic crisis. Although it may seem like a distant memory now, you may recall that we were actually closed for public masses for part of the spring and the summer last year, including Easter, our most holy season of all. And in addition to lost offertory, we also incurred significant sanitizing expenses to the tune of about $35,000 so far. And last summer had to make significant purchase is for us to be able to have our school children in school five days a week. Heading into the new financial year last May as we prepared our budget, we knew that we had to be prepared. We cut our income projections, but some of our fixed expenses could not be reduced. That's why, with the blessing and support of our finance committee, we approved for, the approved for the first time since I've been here, certainly, a deficit budget in late June. Of course, our hope is that the pandemic would be short-lived and we would begin to live a normal ministry and life this fall. And of course, we all know that that was wishful thinking, that COVID-19 is still very much with us. Throughout the summer and fall, our staff worked to trim our expenses to bolster our online ministry so that we can be supporting you. And by the grace of God, we went into the Christmas in a stable position, pun intended. However, as the pandemic continues to linger into 2021, our financial situation needs to be addressed. I'm saddened to report that Continued concerns have forced us to make the difficult decision to reduce a member of staff, at least for now. Our pastoral minister, Dan McAllister, will be leaving us next week, so I ask you please to keep him and his family in your prayers during this transition. Please don't panic. We are not going bankrupt. And God anyway has called us to cast all our anxieties on him. But I want to be transparent with you about what for us is a cash flow issue. I know that some of you are dealing with financial hardship yourself and be assured of my continued prayers for you and for your family. But I also know that for some people, being away from mass and getting out of a usual routine has meant a gradual reduction in or even complete oversight 
of offer tree contributions. Without a collection basket being passed around at Mass or a reminder on Sunday, we've had as many as 800 families whose offertory has decreased or stopped in the last year. That's very significant. We have seen our cash gifts in the basket drop by $89,000 as there are less people attending Mass right now. Speaking about stewardship as a pastor always seems so self-serving. I never find it easy. So I want to take a few moments to share with you how living a life of Christian stewardship can really benefit you. Yes, we need your financial support to continue to minister, to make St. Brendan's a vibrant Catholic parish. But there's more at stake here. When we recognize the biblical truth that we are nothing and that everything we have is a gift from God, our outlook changes immensely. We no longer rely upon ourselves. We recognize that we are owed nothing by God, but given everything. And we learn that we are simply the stewards or caretakers of the gifts and blessings that God has bestowed upon us. We show this understanding in our generosity to others, a clear sign that we do indeed recognize that Jesus is Lord and that we are trusting him, just as Simon, Andrew and those first apostles did. Did you know that science has shown that grateful people are happy people? And is it any real surprise that God designed us in this way? All that we have and all that we are is given to us for God's glory. In their pastoral letter on stewardship, the U.S. bishops write, The Christian steward is one who receives God's gifts gratefully, cherishes and tends them in a responsible and accountable manner, shares them in justice and love with others, and returns them with increase to the Lord. In this time of live-streamed masses, of touchless worship, of sanitized pews, the safest, most direct way for you to support St. Brendan's is by signing up for our digital offertory. There will be a link to that at the bottom of this YouTube video. For those of you who are ready to begin or to increase your support, that will be available to you so that you can sign up after listening to this message perhaps even before Mass, if you were mass watching Mass earlier today. And for those of you who are new or are just beginning to explore financial stewardship, I want to encourage you to pray about how the Lord is calling you to share your first fruits. Not what's left over after all of our own comforts and conveniences have been handled. Not when we get nor everything in order and definitely not once we've got it all figured out on our own. No, the gift we are called to share is one that represents a sacrificial acknowledgement of gratitude to our Creator. I want to encourage you to try keeping a gratitude journal this week. Write down all of the blessings, small, often unexpected, that you receive each day. As your gratitude grows, so too will your desire to share from your abundance. Here at St. Brendan's, our staff will do our part as well to make sure that we are being good stewards of your financial support. For example, you will soon see changes to our offertory bulletin reporting to better reflect our current financial picture. Through our Thank You Thursday Facebook posts, we will share more moments of ministry and mission to demonstrate the immense impact of your gifts. We've already asked our staff to reduce expenses as much as possible. We've implemented new procedures to make sure that every penny spent is being needed and not just something that's wanted. And most of all, we will pray that God will continue to bless St. Brendan parishioners, visitors and friends with generous hearts so that we may multiply these gifts for his glory. Thank you for your continued prayers and, as always, for your generosity. God bless.